My name is Jeremy Beck, and um, I'm a tattoo artist in a little town uh, called Lexington, North Carolina. I've been tattooing for uh, 27 years now. Somebody asked me to do a tattoo on them one time. I was 16, 15 years old. I had no idea what I was doing. He handed me a, it was a homemade little pin and a, a little rotary motor and a, just a, it was like a prison rig. I'd done a, a snake on this guy's arm and it lasted five days <laughs> and, it, and it just kind of faded away. So after I realized that the tattoo was not going to stay, I started looking more into how it worked. And there was, uh, at the time, there was nobody around in my area that tattooed. I think the closest person was, it, I think it was 40 miles away that may have done it and he wasn't very professional. Anyhow, I went to him on my 18th birthday and got one and it was a, an experience that, um, I don't know, I changed my perception of tattooing because he was so horrible and I, I was always, you know, I could do it better than he could so eventually I obtained a, a tattoo kit. I think I paid five or six hundred dollars. It was a bunch of junk. I pulled it out of the box whenever it finally came and it had the needles already loaded into it and I just started working on myself and jamming on myself and scarred myself up. But anyway, it turned into um, tattooing a lot of my friends that wanted them. I had, again, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was doing it. I guess when that happened, it, uh, my drive to make things right, I just kind of morphed into you know, doing tattoos professionally. So around about the same time that I was learning how to tattoo, um, there was a uh, particular artist, his name was Dr. Guy Harvey. That was the first colored illustration of sea life that I'd ever seen. And I, I really loved it. I started trying to, you know, mimic some of the stuff that he did and you know, it kind of turned into my own little thing. I painted, you know, because I was in the tattoo industry, I painted the skulls and, you know, the dark stuff and the hearts and the moms and, you know, the typical stuff that you would see in a tattoo parlor when you would walk into it. Over the last five years, I really dedicated my um, art to just marine life. Yeah, and it's turned into uh, more of a, a passion for conservation. And after you see um, some of the things that can be changed with people's behavior and learning how to be adults and picking up after yourself, I mean, uh, you know, our, our oceans are in danger and it's, it's a bad thing. I just decided to start donating a lot of my stuff to research and conservation and you know for auctions solid auctions and you know just helping the cause eventually i will uh, just go only into you know the painting and um, i plan to move to key west here in a few years and that's where i'll stay Key West is, um, it's, that's a mecca for um, artists of every type. And I think that, you know, the, well, the past several years that I've been going down there, I feel more comfortable down there. I, and I see the, the work that other people do and it, it inspires me and it, it, it encourages me to, to do better. You know, I always push myself to do better, but I think that you know, once I finally make the move, it'll be a, a move that, that'll be a good thing for me. The end goal for me um, by moving down there is to be the accomplished artist that I've always 
seen myself to be. I don't feel that where I'm at right now because of, you know, obviously I'm hundreds of miles away from the ocean. With it being at your doorstep, um, I have every opportunity to, to have all the inspiration in the world. And I think that the end result is going to be me feeling the accomplishment that I've set out to achieve and, and I've chased it my whole adult life. I don't look to have a lavish lifestyle. You know, I plan to, to live on a boat while we're down there. You know, live life one day at a time. I'm, I'm not one of these people that want to chase the American dream. I want to chase my dreams.